Look at this awesome, fun thing that I built uh, over the last week or two. Welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. Today, I'm going to walk you through how I built this fun little diorama, and it all started with this great pork raider sculpt that a friend of mine from Paintwater Soup Discord server linked down in the description. Amazing community that you should totally join. Uh, anyway, Gerald might be monsters, has been getting into sculpting, and he built this tremendous model of an orc with a pig over its shoulder. And I, I had to get my hands on the sculpt, bought it off of Colts, and as I was starting to paint the figure, I started to think of different things I could do for a little diorama to put on it. And not long ago, just a couple weeks ago, I got a Bamboo P1S FDM printer. And that thing just does amazing work with printing out um, terrain and buildings. It, it just opened up a whole lot of different options. So I went out and found a little model that uh, was perfect as the center point for this little diorama. So uh, there's a lot of work that went into this. This might be a little bit longer video, but I'm going to take you through a bunch of things I did. Um, also, some amazing basing bits that I got from Diorama Precipe. I'm totally hacking that up, but it's this amazing Italian company, linked down in the description, that um, does just extraordinary vegetation and terrain stuff for diorama folks um, and i bought literally their mystery box and the amount of stuff i got in this box was just incredible and that also really motivated me to go do some interesting cool stuff um you know, it's a nice thing about our hobby is that you can get a few things together and they really can kick off your creative juices thinking about neat stuff to do. Anyway, enough nattering on. Uh, let's get into the video. As always, take a little bit of time and write down some thoughts about what your goals are, what you want to focus on, what you want to get done. This is the usual stuff you've seen me do in many of my videos. I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to avoid using heavy bodied acrylics for basing. They're really tough for me to get good coverage. And I had some interesting conversations with a number of other painters who all agree just to use them where they really shine, which is layering, uh, blending, glazing. So in the future, I'll either use regular acrylics straight out, or I might mix in regular plus the heavy body. Green is always difficult, but I've had the same problem with other colors as well when I'm using the heavy bodied. Anyway, this is just moving on and starting to paint orc skin. Uh, I really enjoy doing the green skin, um, it's just, it's been a lot of fun to learn and, and to get moderately okay at. Here I'm starting to block in some of the leather. My goal is to have kind of a mid brown with sort of some lighter accents on it. I'll use that for edge and try to give it some texture. Um, I'm experimenting around with some flow improver to see if I can get this uh, covering a little better. Somewhere down the road, I actually mix in some Pro Acryl, uh, I think light umber as part of an experiment to see if I can get some better coverage. That ended up working out pretty well. But here it is just blocking in the pieces that I'm planning for leather. Mm -hmm. 
I've got all the basing blocked out now, except for the pig, but all of the orky stuff. So now it's time for the fun running around and picking out some of the highlights with a mix of green and yellow. Uh, now that the base coat is down, this is where those heavy bodied acrylics really start to shine. Uh, and this is a lot of fun. So just running around with yellow, mixing in some green, starting to blend it out to uh, get some nice highlights in there. So I actually did Google up images of pigs to get an idea of how I wanted to paint the pig. And I settled on starting off with Procurl tan, tan Flesh, just kind of a nice pinky. I'll put some uh, brown blobs on there a bit later, but this is just getting the base coat in on the pig. One of the things I'm experimenting around with is different ways to do NMM. And here I'm doing a loaded brush uh, experiment. So you load up the brush body with whatever the dark color is, and then you get a dab of your highlight color, just a little tiny dab on the tip. And then you just kind of scrub that across the body of whatever you're trying to do NMM on. And uh, here's an example of how little of that light color you put on. I'm not all that great at this, but it's an interesting way to do some quick NMM when you're working on a relatively flat surface like an axe blade. I didn't get too carried away with detail on the orc, but I did a little bit of NMM work on some of the silver things around the shoulder spiky bits, and I thought this big belt buckle was just crying out for some gold. Um, it's just a little bit of rough NMM to block in and pick out some little highlight detail there. Time for a little bit of freehand. I grabbed some Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple. I don't know why, mostly because I had never used it and I wanted to see what it was like. Thought it was a cool color. I decided to put a tattoo on the shoulder of the pig because why not? So as with freehand, a good brush with a really good point, a lot of flow improver so that stuff comes off of the brush well. Uh, I was trying to do a heart with an arrow through it, uh, so I blocked out a V and then just started to try to shape in the V as best I could. Freehand's tough. Um, I pulled out the magnifying glasses because, again, I've got bad eyes and uh, every little advantage helps. Freehand, you just got to get the reps in. Uh, there's some tricks like Flow Improver, using a really good brush and, you know, just practice. And then I decided I didn't like it, so I painted over it and redid the whole thing. It's just paint and plastic, and if you're frustrated and don't like how something looks, just do it again. It's okay. Now 
Now for some fun stuff. I recently bought a Bamboo P1S FDM printer, and this is one of my very first pieces off of there. It's my first terrain piece. And I took the model and actually sliced it at an angle because I didn't want the whole big thing. I just wanted enough to convey the sense that the pork raider had come in and kicked the door down and was making off with the pig. I also um, was debating if I wanted to do any sanding to try to um, deal with some of the layer lines. This was my first terrain print. I took literally default settings. There are a bunch of tweaks and things that I can do moving forward, but this was a great learning experience. I decided not to try around, not to try and fiddle around with the layer lines just to move forward. One thing about this, because of the angle, I decided to sort of chop up the back edge of the roof to make it just look a little ragged. Um, this was just all fun playing around stuff with uh, my new toy for the FDM printer. I didn't think it was worthwhile showing me priming and painting this out on the garage with my airbrush. In case you hadn't noticed, it's primed and painted. And now it's time for uh, my favorite earthy goo, the uh, AK Earth texture stuff. Um, I love this stuff. You see me use it all, all the time when I'm doing other basing projects. This is just a matter of smearing it around to make a muddy mess in the pig pen. I've let that uh, Vallejo texture paste dry overnight, and now I'm just getting some color on it. Um, it's really whatever I had that was left on the palette from the night before, just getting a little bit of color on there. You're not going to be able to see much of this from the diorama, but still, just filling it in. So I've got the pork raider mounted and uh, he's pinned in there. There's a little bit of extra mud around there that I'll paint later. But now it's time to start playing around with all of this amazing stuff from Diorama Presby. I decided I wanted to put um, some kind of grassy stuff on the roof. This box came, the mystery set came with a large box of just this beautiful kind of grassy stuff. It is on this very thick, uh, heavy cardboard-like paper. Um, I'm assuming that it was meant to be cut and just mounted using that paper rather than um, yanked off of there. So, you know, cut it to shape um, using Gorilla Glue. I probably could have used Hot Gun, but that's down. In, anyway, uh, just fastening it on there. I'm having to weight it down just with some stuff, a uh, couple rocks and other things that I have sitting on to make sure that it's staying in good contact with the glue until it dries and sets. Um, and then it's moving on to some of the other really cool pieces uh, that came in that mystery box. I'm getting some uh, interesting stuff that I decided to use as a, um, for trees and then some vines to put around. And the stuff is very delicate, so you just got to be careful with it. Um, prop it into place. Uh, one of the things that 
I was going to have to work around was figuring out how to cover the edges. And um, that's just using some extra material uh, that I pull off a bit later to cover up the edges so you don't see that kind of cardboard paper. This stuff is so much fun to work with. Here's a little bit more freehand to make a sign for the Pig Emporium. My lettering really, really needs help. Um, turns out lettering is harder than doing some shapes, at least for me. Anyway, this was fun to play around with, but boy, howdy, am I going to have to work hard to get better at this. Now I'm working to cover the edge of that cardboard grass on the roof. I'm using both some narrow strips that I've trimmed off from the remainder, uh, which I've got a lot left, as well as just slicing off some of the tufts and um, kind of just jamming them in there. So white PVA glue, little pieces, thin pieces of the cardboard, I probably should have done this before I glued the tree on uh, because the tree, I'm knocking some pieces off. Anyway, uh, massive learning on how to deal with all of these amazing bits from Diorama Precipe. Um, this is just cleaning up and neatening everything up. Now it's time to get the kicked in door mounted in there. I started with Gorilla Glue, but that really wasn't good enough. Um, I moved over to epoxy because I needed something thick to hold things in place. And you know, it's just getting the stuff glued in and laid down. This is getting pretty close to being done. There you have it. This project was just a lot of fun. Um, there were a few little struggles with little odds and ends things, but you know, overall, just um, this hobby thing that we do ought to be fun. And finding little bits and pieces to make the work more fun and rewarding, man, that's just cool. Without further ado, the grand reveal. So there you have it. As always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it if you've made it this far. If you're not already, please click the subscribe button. Uh, that way you'll get automatic notification when I drop new videos. Kindly give me a thumbs up, a like. Uh, it helps the algorithm, for, especially for tiny little channels like mine. And by all means, you know, leave me a comment about the kinds of things you like seeing and uh, stuff you're building yourself. And remember, be kind, learn stuff, experiment, explore. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Until next time, bye-bye.